whether my drum's not in the right spot, um, it can kind of go one way or the other, forward or backwards. And if it does that too much, it'll catch this top lip or that little groove down here. Now to help you combat that, when you come back here, these things, they feel like they're kind of loose and worn out and wobbly. They're really not, they're meant to be that way. So when I'm working this thing down, I can move it back and forth and kind of move it around a bit to help get this thing in. If it's not going in right, the best thing to do is to simply take the pressure off it and move the drum around a little bit to see if you can get this settled better. Um, now before I put clutches in, I'm just gonna do piston and spring. That way I don't have clutches in the way when I put this little snap ring back in. Um, just like last time, make sure your seal points the correct way. So on this one, the piston's gonna go down that way, fluid comes this way, so the seal needs to be facing down that way. Think of it like a door, if it tries to open, it gets jammed up against this and it can't open, whereas if it's upside down, it's gonna wanna fold in this way and all the fluid comes out. Also, the lights are blinding, that's great. Well, you know, we spent a lot of money on all these nice lights and like three of them still work. Although, there were two that were working out here before. Uh, that might have been what my lift guys hit, because they pulled big wire out of the ground and went, well, everything seems to work. Did they ever get centered? I hit my light. What's that? Did they ever get centered on that? Yeah, it's centered now. We can do smogs again. I thought that was funny. That's good, because I put smog classes back in my schedule for next semester. <laughs> Nice so this one, you cannot get any of the feeler gauge or anything into it. So this seal has a much better taper in here to bring it in. So you shouldn't have any trouble putting this piston back in. But the technique remains the same. You want this to go down as straight as possible. If it's turned a little bit, the seal will catch. Also, when you're putting it in, twist it ever so lightly. What happens if you get a seal that's sticking a little bit, it just kind of breaks traction and it slides in better. So if you get into that habit of just set it in here and kind of spin while you put some pressure onto it, it will go down. There we go. This should be easier than the one that you were trying on Monday. That one has a better, you know, a worse habit of catching things. Okay, once that's in, we take our spring and the little plate that kind of captures on the top. And this is where we want to take some time to get recentered on this as best we possibly can. So this should be centered right over that hole. So if I can get this right in the middle, thing should get a good center on it. There we go. Bring the arms in. And we have to keep kind of in mind the same thing. I want to be towards the edges of this ring. If I'm too far in, I won't be able to get the snap ring in. It'll be in the way. So I'm going to set this up kind of towards the edge. Look down the center, and I look relatively centered on it. Let's see how that does. All right, so the first thing I notice is there's a groove that's open here and not there. So my drum really needs to move over this way a little bit. So, it's going to come back up, slide it over ever so slightly, there we go, give it another shot. Alright, I like that better. Alright, and because I took a second to kind of look at it, and you know, not get my face too close to it, but look at it and see it was a little off center, moved it again, this time nice straight shot down. If you try to just force this thing, it doesn't really ever work, it just kind of binds up on this, then it pops and things come apart. Take the time to just kind of move around to line it up. Okay, then we simply have to take our snap ring, put it back in. Oh, I did not grab the best snap ring pliers for this. I'm sorry, it'd be fun. Same thing as before, don't overstretch this or it won't go back into the groove and hold it. So I'm going to do this guy. Start at one edge, see if I can just do this by hand. I don't trust my snap ring pliers for that one. There we go. Let's get that. Um, Normally use snap ring pliers, but if you start one edge on and then work your way around, you can often just do this with your thumbs. Just be careful that your fingernails don't grab onto something sharp. You can pop it back in. So now that I'm absolutely certain that snap ring went in, you want to hear the click, you want to see it in the groove, and then you come back up and the clutch is reassembled, or at least the piston. Okay, so now, switch over to this. If I was rebuilding a new transmission for myself, 
I would have gone in, pulled out these clutches, dipped the new ones in transmission fluid, and kind of reassemble this, and then we're just going to go back together. Same way it came out. All right, and this time I went and got the correct dial indicator. All right, same thing with this. Just start one edge, it'll roll in, and then you go. Okay, so um, this one has a little wave to it, so you can take your feeler gauge and tuck underneath it. This should have a much, much wider amount of play to it. So if I come here, there we are, front clutch, 050 to 0.11. It's almost twice as much play as the other one. And what that is, is this guy is primarily just a garage shift. The car's not moving, we're just gonna slide into it. This one is a little bit more of an aggressive clutch that's used for other things, so it's gonna have more play to it. Now, this one is difficult to use with a dial indicator. I wanted to do that with this one because it has a flat snap ring, so when I pull up on this, it pulls up all the way. I'm gonna use this as a little demo anyway, even though this is best, just keep using your feeler gauges. So this time, I got the correct one. Okay, so what I did is you get these things as straight up and down on the surface you're pulling against. So I simply set this guy up, bring the needle to zero, so on this one it's straight down. And all you have to do is lift up on the clutch. In this case, I'm going from zero to, let's see if anyone can see what I'm going here. So this one's going from zero, you guys see in the front. Anyone read the number? I just want to see if anyone can read this one. It's 4 and 40. 40. 40. So that'd be 0, 4, 0 is what that thing would read. All the way around this is just 0. 0.1. So if I only make it to, let's say, um, well, that 40, well, I, just, I haven't made it all the way to my, my 0. 0.1. I've only made it to 40 of them. Now, the only problem I'm running to with this, though, is there's still a little bit of space because this little snap ring is a little bit of a cushion against the ship. So I'd really need to get in there and pry harder. This is harder to use with a wavy snap ring versus this one. But let's say I got 40, and if I came back here, let's see, my range is going to be 0 .050 to 0 .11. Did I make it? No, no. Not, with, not with that, right? I came up short or too tight. Let's see if I can actually pry against that clutch a little bit. This is not a pry bar, right? That's what she said. All right, so I just flattened out the snap ring and I came up to 75, so there's my true reading. Too much blood. Let's see, I've got, uh, I got zero, uh, 0 0.075 and I'm allowed, where is it? Uh, 0 there it is, 0 0.050 all the way up to 0 0.110. How am I? To this. I can go all the way up to 0 0.110. Did I make it to 110? Yeah. I only made it to 70, right? Yeah. I'm above the 50 minimum, I'm below the 110 maximum. So if I was to go to this, I'm in range, but am I on the tight or the loose range? A little bit tight, right? That's actually good. I prefer clutches a little bit tighter than clutches that are going to slip, and that's kind of where the loose ones are. So that would pass. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's, um, all my presses are in there. Let's reassemble them carefully. I'm going to remind you probably three or four times as I walk around, don't hover your face close to this when you reassemble it. And if it's not pressing down, you need to reposition the drum. So let's go ahead and reassemble them, get your snap rings back in. I will leave this here if you want to try using this guy to measure it just to get a little